welcome back to the breakfast on Pulse TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and we've invited Mr. Chris Omanto, publisher of CKN News. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The headline reads: Fifteen cops, five soldiers killed. Governor says Abuja not safe. The writers read: Boko Haram hoist flag in Ninja village, seizes housewives. 50 communities deserted. ACF, CNG's Lampoon Buhari El Rufai over killing of two more Greenfield University students. And Sheikh Gumi here speaking says increased kidnapping cost by bandits' bombardments. Electricity tariffs may rise in July. NERC plans review. Federal government warns against traveling to India, South Africa, Turkey, and Brazil. Okowa here says, only eight states currently funding pension scheme. CBN says, oil imports go up to $1.32 billion in 2020. Below the headlines on the Punch newspaper, we see a picture of, you know, stuff burning. And the caption reads, a mass cremation of victims of coronavirus at a crematorium in New Delhi, India on Monday. That's sad. NGF, others, condemn NBC's threats to suspend channel's license. Family sources ransom as businessman, nurse and wife. Others abducted in Oyo Hotel. PDP threatens to sue Ogun, alleges fraud in COVID-19 fund spending. Six feet dead as Okada riders transport union members clash in Lagos. Bajami Amila tells banks, stop hitting charges and exploitative marketing. NAF probes several soldiers killed in Bornu airstrikes and attack. Those are the stories in the Punch newspaper. All right, let's move to the Daily Sun. Uh, see what stories we can find there. The big one, pretty scary. It says Boko Haram takes over 50 Niger villages, hoist flag. Tension is gone, men kill 18 in fresh attacks in Anambra rivers, Imo. Many injured and property destroyed in Lagos Okada riders clash. And um, of course, um, still on the you know, Boko Haram story, villagers flee to Mina, state capital. One officer, six soldiers killed in shootout with terrorists in Minok, Borno State. Bandits kill another two, uh, two Kaduna Varsity students. How gunmen invaded Ibo's house in Ibadan. And also, Afegboa drags PDP chair to EFCC and ICPC. Insecurity, Buhari dealing with difficult situation. But Jabia Miller says, APC, Ohaneze, Middle Belt Forum, Arawa Groups express concern. All right, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken visits Nigeria and Kenya. And also, organized private sector laments high inflation as banks' credit increases by 2.5% to 20.38 trillion naira. Those are the big ones on the Daily Sun. The Nigerian Tribune, Niger governor raises alarm. Boko Haram, two hours drive from Abuja, hoist flag in Niger State. NARC Mall's extraordinary tariff review for 11 discos. U.S. Secretary of State uh, to meet with Buhari over security and economy. Senate here is telling the president to respect the federal character principle. NDDC board, Ijo youth threatened to shut down Niger Delta economy. Lagos anti-corruption law, FG to make position known soon. Dozens injured as Okada riders clash with transport union members in Lagos. NBC threatens to sanction Channel CV over interview with IPOB leader. Below the headline, or your government sets up joint security patrol at Ibadan Ijebode border. Gunmen kill two more Kaduna University students, kidnap three in Benue State. Those are the stories on the Tribune. All right. Um, lastly, on the Guardian newspapers, uh, just a few there. Uh, prepare for third COVID-19 wave, Nigerians warned. Also, um, another five policemen reported killed in Imo State. 19 feared killed as hoodlums attack an Ambra community. Commercial banks uh, loan... Exposure to government hits 1.8 trillion naira. Um, I think these are the, the one Boko Haram hoist flag in Niger village and gunmen kill DPO, former poll, two vigilantes in Kebi State. Chris Wandu, uh, let's bring you in here. Um, we described this as a black day earlier. 
uh, not, the stories don't seem to have improved overnight. <coughs> Just go ahead. Yes, um, it's quite unfortunate. Um, we know that what we're having was last kick of the dying horse. Like from the soldiers from what they that, uh, that they got the horse is neither dying nor is in slumber. Is a is moving horse uh, with full strength. Um, they're going about destroying uh, everything on the path. That is a direct um, interpretation of what's going on across Nigeria. And, uh, it's no longer in the east, northwest. We're having in Imo, Rivers, uh, Nasawa, Niger, everywhere. Every part of this tree is touched. It wasn't as bad as this in 2015 when uh, this club. And um, suppose I've been saying that things are getting bad. The government, um, just like an tree that had its, um, its head uh, in sand and um, with his body exposed and tries to say itself. So it's rather unfortunate. And it's coming. Uh, it's mostly we are coming back to what had um, in, in 2000 and um, is it 2002 or 2013 when Kohara ran in uh, uh, Abba, especially Nyanya, the power of the Nyanya and the rest of them. The Niger governor came out today to give a glory, a glory picture of what is happening. 50 villages in uh, Niger have been taken over by Boko Haram. And he said that um, from information at disposal, Boko Haram is about to drive in Abuja, which means you know, almost in Abuja. So it should be a lot of concern to the government that um, the handshake has gone just beyond the, the able, as it were. And um, it's coming, that's been a bit also. But the challenge is that notes, we don't have the solution to what is up. The federal government is, doesn't know what to do. The security agency seems to have lost him. Um, the attacks in this is going on um, continuously. Just here, they go up. Um, is um, under attack again. And <laughs> that is just the story across the area. In most Another police was attacked yesterday. Five policemen were killed. Where we are still talking about the military, we are having a friendly fire where the Air Force was allegedly um, um, attacked or um, um, killed certain, some soldiers that were on the mission somewhere in the northeast. My brother, I don't even know where to start, from, and um, it's just un unfortunate uh, what is going on. Um, <laughs> And they put up on the desk of the president to always call him to question because he is the commander in chief of the armed forces and it's his duty to make us make sure that every year, irrespective of you yourself, is safe. But nobody is safe. We know your state. Yeah, we're talking about ten, a family of 10 were kidnapped from a hotel just a few days ago and then nobody had hurt them. That is the situation we are with ourselves now. Well, um... This also, you know, brings us um, back to 2017, sometime in January, uh, the Iran bombing that, uh, of course, uh, was also declared a mistake, a misfire by the Nigerian Air Force. Uh, we still haven't had anyone prosecuted or questioned, you know, for that incident. About 100 uh, people lost their lives on that day. So, you know, would this in any way be different? Do you think that, you know, anybody should take responsibility or will take responsibility for... Uh, the incidents of yesterday? Oh, definitely. Uh, in Zina Climbs, um, that will be investigated and uh, <coughs> the report will be made public. But you're talking about, have you forgotten the Alpha jet that crashed, that we've not seen it? So you are, or have you forgotten that in now the Nigerian force is not saying anything about it? That they quietly just kept quiet. Boko Haram Mart with a video that, that they shut down that, um, that uh, Alpha jet and um, even show some of this. But the Air Force came out to say, oh, well, it's, not a, it's not the jet um, that uh, line they're making claims. Now, weeks after the shooting down of or whatever, <laughs> the missing of that uh, Alpha jet, 
to date, we don't have anything in Nigerian territory. It didn't fall into water because the area of me we are talking about is an area that is surrounded by water so that you can say open into the sea. We have not seen the, the effort. We have not seen anything about the, the pilot. Um, uh, the pilot in that, that, show, that goes to the level of uh, the problem we are having is multi facial in us. So I still believe that those behind um, that lane of um, um, those soldiers um, should be investigated. But um, to be sincere, them, it happens once in a while. Um, even in other climes, in the United States, it happened during the Iraq war. It happened in Afghanistan. Happened. So, um, but we should be more um, it, it goes to show there is no level of, um, there is no connect between the military agents involved in this war. It seems that the Air Force is doing their own thing, the Army is doing their own thing, the Navy is doing their own thing. And there's no concerted effort to be able to bring this together. So that when the Army is going out um, to attack, the Air Force should be in tune, uh, so that they know how to be able to guard the um, soldiers rather than just um, clean them. It's rather unfortunate. And this story is not the first time we've seen something like this. We heard one that occurred in Obalinde, you know, weeks or months ago, and we've seen a, a similar story here on the Punch newspaper. It says. Okada riders, transport unions fight, not ethnic clash, and that's according to Lagos police. So, uh, Okada riders and you know members of uh, you know the transport union in Lagos, you know they actually had a clash at Yanoba in the Ojo area of Lagos, and so many people were actually injured. So we really don't know you know where this is coming from, what exactly the agitations are, but they say six people have been feared dead, you know, in this clash. And uh, the police statement here is simply that it has nothing to do with ethnicity. So I don't know if you have any perspective about this. You know, the fact that Okada riders and, uh, you know, members of the transport union in the state, you know, have been clashing in recent time. Yes, um, we heard about this today. And uh, there was also a video making, various videos making the run. What <coughs> was more intriguing to me, the... Um, it, that was a particular um, that has to do with um, an attack uh, in front of um, a, in front of a leg, my alma mater, Lagos University. Um, yes, if you see that view and saw how um, this would lost, destroy several cars, several cars uh, that were parked uh, around that area. And from the video, you see that there were military men there, there were policemen there, and they made no effort to stop this rule law from destruction. And that big question, what exactly what me? Um, yes, there is no ethnic um, coloration to read, like Jakarta and um, Union and the rest of it. But you all know that um, most of the Jakarta riders still in Lagos are from a particular part of the country, and that's a fact. Um, if the police say that it's just Nakada riders and um, uh, and union member, uh, then something has to be done. Forget that Lagos statement came out with a law banning Nakada from spread roads, um, or some major roads in the state. But in now the enforcement of that law, you see Nakada in every part of us, even the roads that are designated uh, not to be plied by the riders. You see them on roads and. Um, Competing with motoring and the rest of them and causing also problem. But I believe that issue in job areas will be especially the destruction of vehicles. I was so surprised. You could see that the students of Lagos State University we are trying to fight back because the good loans were kicking ahead with their, their campus. It was just a few meters from their age, and they were fighting back the good loans. And um, in the course of doing that, they quickly now shut down the age. Um, I think it's actually it should be drafted to that area. And uh, all those behind the killing, I should be brought to book either on the part of the union or the part of Okada Rider. But we must start to instill some left discipline. Okay. Um, if there are some designated areas within this uh, that Okada didn't apply, then that should be forget. A few weeks ago, there was another that was killed on the BL lane along the Gege should be uh, uh, expressway. That in itself almost led to another breakdown of law and order. Um, but uh, I think that should be nipped in the ball. And um, the government should become a firm if they are said they are banning on Kada Then, then those operators should okay. remain banned. So, Mr. And if the unions are doing, they're not supposed to do. Then those uh, are the 
Mr. Wanju. Uh, right. on, another challenge, you know, that it seems that we've been battling for quite a while now is about electricity tariff. On the front page of the new, of, of the Punch newspaper, uh, the NERC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, is saying that electricity tariff may rise in July. And the NERC, you know, has been explaining why this might be. It's saying, you know, there's changes in inflation, foreign exchange, gas prices, available generation capacity, capital expenditure. They've just been listing reasons why, you know, they have to review the tariff for electricity and why that review might be upward. But remember a World Bank report that said about 78% of Nigerians, you know, do not even get up to 12% of power. But the federal government issued a statement saying that was not true and that the government was making, you know, improvements regarding power supply, power distribution in Nigeria. But, you know, the World Bank reports and then this about, you know, possible rise in July. Which way for Nigeria? Which way Nigeria? Um, it, that was a song um, by Lee Sonny If you are a lover of that, I saw Lee Sonny which way Nigeria, which way I love my partner, I want to. Um, that's going on is a pretty day can place after Sonia Kosuri's that album. And that is the turn on top of every Nigeria, which way Nigeria. Um, back to question on electricity. Well, we will continue to this, just like the same issue we are um, seeing with that petroleum. Uh, um, the electricity sector has been uh sort of um privatized and um, the, the discos are now um uh, uh, we are at the mercy of discos anytime whatever I agree or whatever they, they tell us is what they're going to pay and federal this is not any rc um, is that a loss has what to do but that is not an issue for me the issue for me is that where is the power are we having the power we are not having the power electricity uh, distribution is at its low uh, most Nigerians are not even in the power, um, they're not even in the electricity. Companies are dying, companies that are shutting down. And at the end of it, if you see what uh, this electricity company's ring has built, you'll be shocked. Um, two bedroom flats getting as much as about 40, 35,000 monthly, um, some 20,000. What is the average income of, uh, of Nigeria, of uh, an average Nigerian? And that is, that is the situation where uh, Nigerians have an alternative. It has only been uh, electric and uh, the diesels have been the additive uh, supply. Uh, Nigerians party run on generator. So uh, it's to be generator on standby, uh, major electricity. But now the major electricity is just on standby where the uh, people now depend on. Uh, so, and uh, they've said that on uh, a monthly or so uh, basis that you have a review of the tariffs. Um, the last one that was just a few months ago, where Nigerians were crying, crying, and they didn't about. So coming to terms again uh, with another tariff um, in the next few weeks, I'm not surprised. But what alternative do we have? And this is where the government took it that um, there was this cry and uh, this jubilation few months back um, when Nigeria um, came out to say that it has signed uh, an agreement with men to improve electricity. If you remember really, vividly well, that was a, a contract um, that was being negotiated by where the former chief of uh, staff, Abakari, traveled to Germany, uh, <coughs> where he started the COVID-19 and the eventual died from it. I don't know what happened to the contract. To date, nobody said anything about that. That, we were told, was going to improve electricity supply in India by, by far. But now, we are generating around uh, 5,000, uh, uh, 5,000, and distribution is just a, a little below uh, 4,000. And on a, on a daily basis, our not grid is collapsing because they cannot even carry what is generated. And that is we find us at the middle of our doesn't seem, it seems helpless. The NRC also seems helpless. The federal government seems helpless. And just leaving us in the hands of to do whatever they want. And they are seeing us to do calocally. That is why we find ourselves. All right. Um, well, just finally, before we go, I, I want your thoughts on the Greenfield uh, students who are still in captivity. Uh, uh, reports uh, say two more were found dead yesterday, so that's a, f a total of five now who have lost their lives. Um, you would expect that it would be a, 
um, a situation that should generate full national concern and the country should not rest until these people are rescued. But it doesn't seem that way, even from the Kaduna State um, uh, Government. And of course, I might be wrong. Uh, but what's your reaction to you know, those people still in captivity? Remember, the um, students from the School of Forestry Mechanization are still in captivity. And then this. Um, what do you, what's your reaction to the way the government is handling these uh, situations? Um, the, the, um, is a very important um, happening. The Cardinal's government and the state of the North is not going to negotiate with Chris And uh, then we have about 20 main hospitals from the other institutions still under um, the band. I believe and I have to normally push what I'm done to raise the student. Um, this quite a problem, but the government has just the, the, uh, uh, the parents to their kids. And that is not enough. The uh, secure of life property is the busy, uh, right. uh, is uh, the uh, job of Chris government Wando, we may... that is elected. So yeah. if that's, if the grant is not being was then the grant should leave. If the Cardinal State government cannot be able to secure the lives and properties of students within or in Nigeria, then the governor should leave. It shouldn't just be coming to tell, oh, well, I'm not going to shoot bandits and the rest of them. Who cares whether you shoot or not? The basic, first and foremost, his responsibility as governor is to secure the for everybody in Kaduna State. You shouldn't oh, tell us that he, 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 he's going to get that done. Let the students leave. It's not my business. But he should make it to make sure that students are But His body language and the kind of things that he comes out to say, I'd be based right. the, nobody does that. And right. uh, it might be, uh, I might be uh, sentimental, but ask if those students, his children, we we also that we hear him saying something. Oh, God, if your student were kidnapped or whatever, he will pray for, he will pray for and rest. Then it's merely a story. If you student not kidnap as a governor, what will you? So you should put yourself in the shoes of the parents of these children. And I do what they did to make sure that this is right. It's happening in, in uh, Chris Wanda, thank you very much. And the, the, the students have so a problem with that of Cardinal. Why is he not doing the right? All right, thank you very much, uh, Chris Wandu, for your thoughts this morning and for spending uh, your Tuesday morning with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. You have me. Same to you. 27th of April, we're taking a short break. When we come back, we're sharing with you some of the major events that happened on this day many years ago. I'm going back to the year 1994, and I'm talking about an iconic um, election that, of course, uh, made history. Yeah, still talking about elections and the birth of people running for elections after the break. Do stay with us.